This original WSRE presentation is made possible by viewers like you. Thank you. You know, Pensacola Bay Area is such a special place. And from the beginning, the founding board and then the leadership that has taken place ever after and the members have been so passionate about the Impact 100 concept, the process. It's like they can't help themselves but to talk about it and spread the word. Our grant recipients have been able to make an impact on the community because of the power that women have when they pool their funds and give collectively. These organizations have touched every corner and every aspect of life in Escambia and Santa Rosa counties. They have, among other things, fed the poor, improved and increased free health care, renovated historic sites, empowered the handicapped, and propelled the arts. We cannot thank the ladies of Impact 100 enough. They are there for us and they are there for our community. They're a terrific organization and we appreciate them. It began as a local organization in one American city, but the concept was embraced across the country and spread overseas. Impact 100, a simple but revolutionary idea has become a phenomenon in women's philanthropy, a transformational approach that empowers women from all walks of life to profoundly change the communities in which they live. Impact 100 originated in Cincinnati, Ohio in 2001. The idea was ambitious but straightforward. Recruit at least 100 women who would each give $1,000, then pool their resources in order to provide a grant of $100,000 to fund a community need. The first two cities to follow Cincinnati's lead were Pensacola, Florida and Austin, Texas. But over time, impact organizations sprang up in Chicago, Philadelphia, New Orleans, and in 15 other American communities. The impact idea even took hold across the Pacific Ocean in five locations in Australia. But it was on the Florida Gulf Coast in the area surrounding Pensacola Bay that Impact 100 has attained its greatest success. For 2014, Impact 100 Pensacola has 1,025 yeah. members. We will be awarding $1,025,000 at the annual meeting in October, and I hope each of you will be there to do it with us. Despite the metropolitan area's relatively small size, Impact 100 Pensacola Bay Area has become the largest impact organization in the world. So perhaps it is here that the impact story can best be told. Good evening. Good evening. Hey, we're here to celebrate, right? At the historic Sanger Theater in downtown Pensacola, a special event in the spring of 2014 marked the first decade of the organization's extraordinary achievements. Nonprofits who are making a difference in the lives of people in this community every day, please stand up. The 10th anniversary also provided an opportunity to recognize the many nonprofits that have benefited from Pensacola Bay Area Impact Grants. The evening featured congratulations from broadcaster Katie Couric, a presentation by philanthropist Patricia's sister Schubert Barnes, and remarks by the current and former presidents of the organization. The celebration included the release of a book, The Impact of Impact 100, which highlights in photographs the efforts of dozens of nonprofits touched by impact grants. The keynote speaker was Wendy Steele, the founder of the original impact group in Cincinnati, who was so impressed by the Pensacola chapter, she became a member of the group herself. What you've done in 10 years is spectacular, but I'd like to go on the record to make a little prediction. I believe what you're going to do in the next 10 years and the 10 years after that is even grander. And I hope to be a part of it every step of the way. 
In developing the impact idea, Wendy Steele envisioned an ultra-efficient form of philanthropy, one with no overhead expenses, in which the nonprofits selected for grants receive the entire amount of each hard-earned $1,000 contribution. Impact 100 was designed to appeal to the broadest number of women so that there would not be a reason they would decline becoming involved. But at the same time, it was designed to be completely inclusive. There should never be a nonprofit within the geographic region that the particular Impact 100 serves who couldn't apply. So our five focus areas are education, environment, health and wellness, family, and culture. Each one was designed to be broadly interpreted. And in the case of our nonprofits in the community, oftentimes a nonprofit might qualify under each one of those five. When Debbie Ritchie became aware of the original Impact 100 group in Cincinnati, she reached out to Wendy Steele with the thought of starting an organization in Florida. Debbie is the founder and president emeritus of Impact 100 Pensacola Bay Area, and she joins us now. Take me back to the beginning, Debbie. How did you find out about Impact 100? You know, it's kind of funny. Um, it all started with a People Magazine article, and you're always reluctant to say that because you want to think you're reading Newsweek or Time or something, but it was just totally for entertainment and enjoyment for me. And I saw this article about this organization that had started in Cincinnati and was really drawn to the story, um, both of the way that they had, this group of women had made a decision to give money, but also to the nonprofit that had been the recipient of the funding. And uh, when I read it, I was uh, drawn to it and wanted to share the story with other women who I thought would be equally drawn. And we, uh, we had the chance to reach out and see if it'd work here in this community. Were there naysayers? Did anybody tell you that the idea simply would not work? Uh, you know, I, I can specifically recall we, we reached out to some folks with nonprofit experience and we asked them, you know, what do you think about this concept? Would it work here? And they were positive and yet they had plenty of reasons why they didn't think it would work in this community. But there were more women who thought it would work. And uh, this community has always been a very caring and giving community, very committed to philanthropy and service. And uh, we made the decision that, you know, we would reach out to other women and tell the story and let them decide if they thought it would work here. Well, why did you feel that there was a need for such an organization in the Pensacola Bay area? I. I thought, you know, it was a combination of many things about Impact 100. I love the thought of all women, and the women who joined after love that same thought. Um, I think it was a reflection of this community and the fact that uh, there were so many people in this community that wanted to give, and yet there was a way to give uh, that was more effective. And Impact 100, um, in fact, one of the mission statements of Impact 100 is that it really is about effective philanthropy. So it was about combining and pooling talent um, of people and resources and then collectively giving and making a difference in the community. And there wasn't anything quite like that. Uh, I'd been involved in nonprofit giving as were you know, many of the women who made a decision to join Impact. And while there were lots of nonprofits doing good work, they were typically getting smaller grants to help with their operational needs. And remember, the concept of Impact was about high impact giving. So it was really challenging a nonprofit to think big, to dream big about what they could do if they had a larger grant that would allow them to do that. And it was all of those variables, I think, and, and others that made me think, in fact, that it would work here. And fortunately, you know, we were quickly met with other women who said, yes, you know, I want to be a part of this. Um, one of the first Pensacola Bay Area grants that was awarded to a nonprofit whose work fulfills, it, it fulfills a very basic need, um, the need for shelter. 
Well, you know, the one of the first couple of grants we had really addressed basic needs that people had. So, you know, the, the Habitat uh, for Humanity grant was really about, while it was about ensuring that people had homes and had shelter, what it was really about for the Women of Impact 100 was also a way to keep funding recurring for that organization. So it was a way to kind of seed an opportunity for continuous giving. I think that's what appealed to so many women. That first year, we also funded um, a, a clinic that was really about helping to meet the basic health needs of people. And it was done in a way that, you know, drew upon talent to volunteer, you know, doctors, nurses to volunteer their time, but then to also make sure that when people went in to see a physician to get their care needs met, that they could also leave with the medication they needed. And, you know, from the very beginning, the impact grants really set the stage, I believe, and and I think is evident by the members that have followed the stage for what we wanted, which was sustaining of philanthropy in the community and meeting people's needs. Let's take a look at one of the earliest grants. Habitat puts God's love into action by bringing people together to build homes, communities, and hope. A great deal of the employment locally is low-wage employment. So it's so important to have affordable housing for people who are on the low wage side of our community. There's so many disadvantages that occur when you are in poverty, when you're a single parent, and I just wanna do anything I can to contribute. This is an unusual, kind of unusual build for us in that it is Women Build. Women Build is a program of Habitat for Humanity International. It takes place nationwide in participating local Habitat affiliates. Oftentimes, it is not a usual guess that on a construction site that you would have nothing but women. Women can do some amazing things, and the fact that we're building a house today is just one example of that. Habitat for Humanity was one of the grantees of the first year of, of Impact 100 Pensacola Bay Area. And what that did was to help us begin our ReStore. Uh, Habitat ReStore is a thrift store that kind of hits a particular niche of dealing with building products as well as home furnishings and things like that. But also all of the monies that come into the ReStore and all of the profits from the ReStore go to Pensacola Habitat to build more houses. And, and the funding that has come through the ReStore has built dozens and dozens and dozens of homes over the past 10 years. Uh, since it was founded with an Impact 100 grant. Then we were again fortunate to be granted uh, one of the eight last year that was awarded. And this supports our neighborhood revitalization initiative. We can come in with crews of volunteers to augment the homeowners in the neighborhood, in, enlivening and uh, really bringing back a, a feel of vitality uh, that the, the homeowners from that point take on because there's a new sense of pride developed. This is a way where you don't have to be an expert, you don't have to have a special skill set to contribute, you just gotta come out here with a big heart. They will teach you and show you what you need to do and then you know, we combine that energy as that force, the house goes up. And that to a family is the domino that leads to all other really great opportunities and that contributes to making Pensacola stronger and better. Were you surprised at the community's response to the impact idea? You know, I, obviously we were all a bit surprised. We thought that the community would be receptive to this. Um, truthfully, that first year, we just wanted to find 100 women who would say, you know, I'm willing to take a chance on this. This is new and uh, the concept of impact is all volunteer, no paid staff you know, women sort of volunteering their time and collectively coming together to make decisions. And it was, it was new, it was change for this community. So while there was reluctance, we were all elated that there was great support. And, and yet now every year, you know, we have to ask people to continue to give because just because you joined one year doesn't mean that you're a member forever. It requires a commitment of your time and of your money to continue to be a member. So I think honestly, all the women of impact are always um, both not surprised and surprised when we, when we get that good showing of support. Thank you so much for being with us, Debbie. Thank you.
Debbie Ritchie served as president of Impact 100 Pensacola Bay Area until 2006. Later in the program, we will meet her successors who continued to guide the organization during its remarkable first decades of growth. Impact 100 Pensacola Bay Area was an immediate success, attracting 233 members in its very first year. This enabled the group to award not one, but two grants of more than $100,000. In addition to helping Habitat for Humanity sustain its mission, in 2004, Impact targeted the essential human need for health care. Good Samaritan Clinic was the first of three medical facilities to be awarded a grant. In later years, Impact funded Health and Hope Clinic and Our Lady of Angels St. Joseph's Medical Clinic. These nonprofits and their volunteers provide a deeply personal touch in caring for area citizens who have nowhere else to turn. In 2004, we began to plan for Good Samaritan Clinic. We were blessed to be one of the first two recipients of the Impact 100 grant. We were actually able to hire people that would redo our building and get it ready for our clinic. And the other thing that we were able to do, we had already made up our mind that in opening the clinic, we would not only furnish free medical care, but we would furnish free medications. I heard about Good Samaritan Clinic just from the general community. I was very impressed with the concept of an indigent care clinic where the entire staff is all voluntary. So taking care of people in our community without insurance, without the means to pay for their, their health care is um, very important to me and it's nice to have this clinic and this community that's willing to do that. There's a lot of people that have no medical insurance and they don't have enough money to have a doctor. Most of them would go to the emergency room and uh, for regular care. That, that's the only place they have to go. We try to be human to the people that come here. Uh, they're not just a number, but they're people with real concerns, and we try to help them. Well, I had the basal cell skin cancer, but there wasn't nothing I could do. I didn't have no money, I didn't have no insurance. So, well, I'll just go till I can't go. We did what we could to get him in at Shands down at the University of Florida Medical Center. They took him. He's now uh, in remission. I'm real thankful that, that they had the, the means to get my health turned around. Or right now, they say I'm cancer free. Been blessed to, to be introduced to this place, and this clinic is a, it's a lifesaver, you know, for someone in my position who sometimes can't afford your medicines, and um, when you need help, they do everything they can to help you out and to provide you what you need, but not just that, they make you feel good, they make you feel welcome. For the most part, we kind of serve as their last resort for a lot of patients. Uh, had they not had the ability to come and see us at Health and Hope, they would, you know, be without uh, primary medical care. The grant that we received through Impact 100 really helped us to uh, launch ourselves in terms of community outreach, help uh, the community become aware of who we were, and they also helped us become aware of some of the resources that were available to us. When I found out I was diabetic, they really helped me in the classes and the medicine and all the doctors have just been really great working with us explaining and getting us appointments and just, it just really has been a true blessing. Everybody has just been great. Well, Impact, the Impact 100 ladies for us is uh, probably been the most influential group in town as far as allowing us to uh, uh, fulfill our mission, uh, which is to provide medical care and services to uh, anyone in our community who is without health insurance and uh, is within or under 200% of the federal poverty level, which for a family of four approaches $40,000. Uh, we serve uh, homeless people. We serve uh, the working poor. We serve people who are looking for work. We have a very large group of patients that we care for. Last year, we had approximately 8,000 patient visits. The back half of this building was uh, built for us by the Impact Ladies through a grant that we received uh, several years ago. 
It allowed us to expand our exam rooms from four to eight, which therefore allowed us to keep up with the huge explosion of patient visits that we were seeing and allowed our uh, volunteers, not nurses and physicians, to uh, be more efficient in providing that care. And it also uh, let us to provide more services to the patients. So Impact 100 has uh, been extremely uh, influential in the development uh, of this clinic and carrying out its mission. For over 30 years, people in need of emergency food assistance have turned to MANA food pantries for help. MANA has provided nutritionally balanced food to tens of thousands of citizens in Escambia and Santa Rosa counties. Impact 100 first awarded a grant to MANA in 2005, along with subsequent grants in 2008 and 2012. Despite suffering catastrophic flood damage in 2014, this vital community service has persisted in its mission to leave no one unfed. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Well, the role of MANA in the community is that we provide food to the hungry in the two county area. So in Escambia and Santa Rosa counties, we have four pantries and we also have a couple of programs that are specialized. Um, one is for seniors and the other one is for uh, backpacks for teenagers who are homeless in Santa Rosa County. And so what it really boils down to is that MANA provides food, healthy, nutritious food, to people in need. They are folks who suddenly find themselves in a situation that they need a little help, and that's why MANA's here, to help them. We came down here to uh, spend my retirement, and we had um, a place we thought we could move into. You know, we kind of were running low on money and at the end of things, because I get paid once a month, and um, it's nice that you can come to us to somewhere where they don't really judge you and look at you, you know, like, why are you here getting food, you know? For us, impact has over the years been amazing to MANA and to our community. For MANA, we've received grants from impact that have helped us purchase vehicles, and those vehicles then get food that's put in them to take to the hungry, to take across the two county area, to pick up the food as well, to deliver that food um, to specialized programs that need help. Then we've also had um, Impact give us a grant to help with gardening and community gardens so that people could learn how to grow their own food and be more sustainable. And then the last Impact grant that we got was to help us air condition our warehouse space next door. On the morning of April 29th, what happened was this receiving warehouse, which is our high ground, took in about two to three feet of water. I don't use the word devastation lightly. It truly devastated us. Yet the need didn't go away. The need continued. And so um, luckily we were able to start back service almost 12 weeks to the day, three months to the day that we were closed. I have two reactions to the sign at Impact. That the, our Impact 100 sign that says thank you uh, over in our other building that we're not occupying right now. The first reaction was that morning when I walked through the building and I, I saw all the devastation. And I thought, wow, we spent a lot of time making the improvements here and it all seems to be gone. And then, every time since then that I've gone into that room, it hasn't made me feel that way, it's given me hope. Looking at that sign when we walk over there reminds us of this amazing community that enables MANA to do what we do every day. When we hand a bag of food to someone who's in need and they take that home, that night they probably sit at their dinner table and they have some of that food that was given to them by MANA. What they don't know is that around that table with them are the women of impact. An image from a man a garden graces the cover of The Impact of Impact 100, the book commissioned to celebrate Impact 100's first decade of service to the Pensacola Bay Area. The book depicts dozens of good works funded by their grants. Many buses to allow inner city children to experience a world outside their own. Equipment to help a nonprofit catering business serve chronically ill homebound patients and their families.
a covered riding area to provide equine therapy for children with developmental disabilities, improvements to the library and reading programs in an impoverished area of Escambia County, a glass crusher and building for a glass recycling operation, lumber, tools, and a truck for volunteers to build wheelchair ramps for people confined to their homes. These are just a few examples of nonprofit initiatives that have felt the impact of Impact 100. Linda Hoffman became the second Pensacola Bay Area president in 2006. She was followed by Julie Shepard, who served as president until 2010. During that four-year period, membership increased to more than 500, and the organization distributed over $2 million in grants. Many nonprofits are highly motivated by the prospect of an impact grant. Julie, can you describe the process you use to help nonprofits apply for your assistance? Sure, we actually have quite a detailed process. We start in the spring after we've announced our membership numbers with how many grants we're going to award and ask all the not-for-profits that are interested in applying to file a letter of intent. We follow up with a not-for-profit workshop where we talk about the application, what needs to be in it, and then the actual grants are due at the end of June. The grant application itself is fairly detailed. It's not the type of um, grant an organization can put put together in a couple days, and it has a lot of requirements for uh, their mission, their programs, how they'd spend the money, sustainability, their financials. Um, and, and we spend a lot of time working with not-for-profits to make their applications better and better over the years. What steps are taken to provide the basis for informed decisions? You know, the whole impact structure is designed to where women get to know the community through the grants. Julie was talking about how you have the grants that are filled out by the nonprofits. Once they're received by impact, you actually have five committees that are in each focus area. And the women volunteer to be on the committees and actually read every single grant. They get to meet with every nonprofit, or at least one person from two people from each committee meet with the nonprofits. And you meet and discuss all aspects of the grant and really get to know them there. The committees select the ones who are going to come out at the annual meeting. And even at the annual meeting, those nonprofits present again to the women. So if you're one of the women, you actually hear these nonprofits, either in the committees or at the annual meeting, tell you about what they do and what they're going to do and their grants and what they're going to do with our money. So it's really through the grants that you get to learn about all, what all these nonprofits do in the community. Julie, what effect did the prospect of multiple grants begin to have on your membership and on the nonprofit community? When we got to the point where we were giving a grant in every focus area, I think the excitement really grew. Um, it meant that every, you know, whether you're in arts and culture or you're in the health and wellness category, you knew that one of the finalists was going to get a grant. And uh, it became a, um, almost a badge of honor, I think, in that community. We started to see signs on facilities, impact grant winner. Um, as a member, I think you started to go around the community and you would see organizations that you had funded. And as a member, you started feeling this kind of ownership or knowledge of that in a, in a way that you didn't have before. So it, it grew exponentially exponentially for both the not-for-profit and for the um, members, I think, the excitement of impact. In 2010, Impact 100 awarded a grant to a group that helps transform the lives of people in desperate circumstances. Let's look into Pathways for Change. The problem with substance abuse, of course, is that People who suffer from this illness tend to be unsuccessful in society in all their relationships and they tend to be consumers of the resources in our community, which are limited. And so Pathways for Change removes all the obstacles from keeping them from being successful and we move them toward being productive uh, members of our community. So the mission of Pathways for Change, changing lives, reducing crime, building futures. We told the story of Pathways for Change to Impact 100, and we said we want to do more than intervention, we want to do prevention. 
and we understand that Escambia County is one of the poorest counties in the state of Florida. What are we gonna do about that? And Impact 100 said a family center in the poorest neighborhood in Escambia County. We are gonna support that one-stop shop for education, vocational training, social services, mental health counseling, addictions treatment, bringing families together. Whatever barriers of poverty uh, that you can break, we're behind you 100%. Uh, that's why we have the Family Center. It's so important. Uh, where our men in treatment, their families can come here for uh, GED and vocational training and parenting classes. So the families are learning and growing a sober life along with their loved one in our men's residential treatment. People who live in poverty pass it down to their children. Now, their children really don't know any other way of living, but if somebody just gives you a hand, then you can get out of it. And the significant thing about Impact 100, the building would not have been built without it. But even more importantly, we are a relatively small nonprofit and we don't have a marketing uh, budget. So when Impact 100 wraps their arms around a mission, it is well known throughout our county and our community and, and nationally. And so we believe that a lot of the respect that we receive now and um, the security that people feel in investing in us came from Impact 100 Women. They're amazing. One woman, one vote. Linda, how difficult is it for the members to reach those decisions? Well, I think there's actually probably two times where people are voting that's important. One is when you're in the committees. And I think as a committee member, when you're voting, you feel this kind of responsibility that you want to make sure you're selecting the nonprofits that everyone else is going to feel comfortable with, that everyone else agrees they're going to be deserving of our award. So there's a certain amount of responsibility when you're voting at the committee level. When you get to the annual meeting, it's really your own passion and you hear everybody speak. And I think what we've all decided over the years is you walk in thinking you're going to vote for one and you hear the people speak and you end up voting for someone different. Are there any stories that you can share about people or organizations that made a very special impact on you? I'll start with you, Julie. There are so many wonderful organizations that Impact has funded in all of the different areas. It would be really hard to pinpoint one. What has been amazing for me is that all of these organizations continue to grow and thrive and actually come back to impact to our membership meetings. And they talk about those projects and the, the impact of that initial funding on that project and the future programs. And those projects are all alive and well in this community. And to me, that's the, the most special part of impact. What do you think, Linda? Yeah, I think actually my most special part of impact is the fact that you gather a group of women who get very focused during this whole process on finding the organizations that can do the best job for the community. And to me, it's more looking at what a concerted group of women can do when they've got their mind set on it and when they've got great nonprofits in the community because it's the nonprofits that really give us the opportunity to make the money work. So it's, it's more seeing everybody be able to put their concerted efforts together and come out with a great result. Well, thank you, Linda and Julie, for the work that you do and for joining us on this program. Impact 100 makes it possible for agencies doing good to do even more good, regardless of whether they operate in the private or public sector. Escambia Westgate is a public school that serves hundreds of special needs students. For profoundly autistic children, a key program at Escambia Westgate is Snoozalin therapy, involving sensory stimulation for those who would otherwise be almost impossible to reach. Snoozalin is a concept that came to us uh, through a company in Europe, and we are the only Snoozalin center uh, of this magnitude in the United States. It is a multi-sensory complex uh, and we address the sensory needs of our students. It gives them the ability to, to calm and settle and, and therefore can learn um, when they are in that kind of state. We serve children, all children with special needs, 
from age three through 22. Um, our children have autism, uh, they are intellectually disabled, they are physically disabled, um, and they have a lot of special needs uh, that we serve all their needs here at Westgate. The Polar Room, they are able to touch, feel, smell the polar environment. Uh, there are uh, fiber optics in there, there are bubble tubes in there. All of these uh, fulfill sensory needs in the, uh, in the children that they won't find anywhere else but in this sensory complex. We have about 270 very special children here. They're uh, having water day today, or water play day, and they are having a wonderful time. And uh, if it wasn't for Impact 100, then uh, some of them might never even experience water as they are today on these two wonderful parks. I think the, the ladies of Impact 100 saw that what, what we do here at Westgate and how we work with children and their very specific needs. Um, and I don't think you can walk away and not be touched by that. It started out as just kind of a, a dream, I think, for the former principal of this school and for the teachers in this school and members in our community um, to have the Snoozeland Center. It generated a, a lot of interest and a lot of goodwill from many members of Impact 100. So they became part of the dream. And then when Westgate applied for another grant for playground equipment, that was granted. Our kids are very, very lucky. Impact 100, thank you. For nonprofits, it's hard to overstate the value of an Impact grant. It allows them to reach a goal that might be unattainable otherwise. In the spring of 2014, in the midst of celebrating the success of their first decade, the Women of Impact 100 Pensacola Bay Area started their second decade with an unprecedented opportunity. With more than a thousand members, they would be able to award 10 grants by year's end, two in each focus area. To help area nonprofits prepare their applications and ready themselves for site visits by impact committee members, the organization hosted an in-depth grant workshop attended by hundreds of area nonprofit representatives. The nonprofits were given guidance about the most effective ways to make their cases to the members of Impact 100. The focus of the annual grant workshop was on the future, looking ahead to the review process later in the summer and to the voting process in the fall. But in May of 2014, the Pensacola Bay Area Impact members also took a look back. Now this is the lab after the grant. To the left now we Eight grant recipients from the previous year reported on the progress they had made on their projects such as new technology and transportation for independence for the blind of West Florida, and enhancements for the Council on Aging that included the addition of handrails for a walking track at their adult day healthcare center and the acquisition of three minivans for safe, reliable transportation of senior clients. We want to make all of Pensacola no-kill and a much safer place for pets should they ever find themselves in a shelter. Pensacola Humane Society received funding for a high-quality, low-cost spay and neuter clinic for dogs and cats designed to help reduce the number of animals that are euthanized in the area. Several very serious issues were addressed by impact grants in 2013. For example, support was provided for Gulf Coast Kids House, which works with victims of extreme child abuse as well as for Favor House, which deals with violence against women and children and administers assistance in the residential program. The members of IMPACT don't shy away from problems that tear at the fabric of society, but they also recognize the importance of efforts that offer inspiration and enlightenment. During its first decade, the Pensacola Bay Area chapter enhanced the quality of life by making significant grants in the areas of preservation, arts, and culture. <laughs> The Pensacola Opera is one of several regional arts organizations to receive the support of Impact 100. 
In 2011, an impact grant funded renovation of the Pensacola Opera Center. This multi-use facility enhances the company's main stage productions, as well as fundraising and education programs. It also provides an accessible, affordable space for community meetings and events. The first ever local impact grant in the arts and culture focus area was awarded in 2006. Bravo for Kids was a project to make musical instruments available to Escambia and Santa Rosa County middle school students who do not have the financial means to furnish their own. Pyramid Incorporated helps adults with developmental disabilities by encouraging participation in the visual and performing arts. Their 2010 grant funded the construction of an Impact 100 Fine Arts Wing and supported and expanded other Pyramid programs. The Pensacola Museum of Art received impact grants in both 2009 and 2013, resulting in computer, technology, and lighting system upgrades, as well as new floors and improvements to the heating and air conditioning systems. The museum is housed in the Old City Jail Building, an historic structure dating back to 1909. Impact 100 Pensacola Bay Area members have awarded several grants to nonprofits dedicated to preserving the region's history. First lit in 1859, the Pensacola Lighthouse is the tallest on the Gulf Coast. Its beacon still guides ships through Pensacola Pass, and the tower is open for members of the public to climb 177 steps to enjoy a splendid view. In 2012, the Pensacola Lighthouse Association received impact funding for restoration and repairs, replacing bricks and mortar, and sealing the granite foundation. Designated by the King of Spain in 1807, St. Michael's Cemetery is one of the oldest in the state of Florida. The eight-acre site is a virtual outdoor museum of Pensacola's diverse history. Impact 100's 2010 grant to the St. Michael's Cemetery Foundation helped restore stone markers, masonry, and metal fencing, and served to increase public awareness of the important role the cemetery plays in preserving Pensacola's past. The Imogene Theater in downtown Milton has served as the cultural center of Santa Rosa County since 1913. In the year the historic showplace celebrated its 100th anniversary, the Santa Rosa Historical Society received an impact grant to rehabilitate the Imogene with new lighting and stage equipment and renovations to its kitchen and museum of local history. Productions at the Pensacola Little Theater are staged in a venerable building formerly known as the Escambia Court of Record, built in 1911. However, a 2008 impact grant allowed the Little Theater to take its act on the road for a project called Beyond the Boundaries. We felt it was very important to take theater to the underserved communities. We were fortunate to get the truck and portable staging, portable lighting, and portable sound system and everything so we could take a very large or small theatrical production out of the walls of the PLT. A magnificent pipe organ was a distinctive feature of the Sanger Theater when it opened its doors in 1925. Impact 100 awarded grant funding in 2012 to help restore and increase the size and capacity of the organ. Impact 100 put us right over the top with this restoration portion, the most expensive, the most time-consuming, the most difficult portion of this whole process. As a centerpiece of the beautiful Sanger Theater, known to many as the Grand Dame of Palafox, the restored pipe organ will add immeasurably to the cultural life of the region. Marnie Needle became president of Impact 100 Pensacola Bay Area in 2010. Holly Jernavoy has served since 2012. They provided leadership as the group continued to gain recognition as the world's largest impact organization. Marnie, can you describe the makeup of your organization and how would you describe the motivation of the members who make such a commitment? You know, the makeup is amazing. We have women as young as 18 and we have women as old as 90. We have women every age and every generation. And 
giving and giving $1,000 is tough for many people. So many women join every other year. Many women do join every year. But every woman who joins gets to feel a part of something so much larger than themselves. For example, I don't know many women who could give $100,000 to any one organization. But I know that I feel a part of every single grant that has ever been awarded because I have been a member of Impact 100. And I can go around town, as every woman who is a member can, and look around and feel a part of that organization. What about you, Holly? I think that the women that are members of Impact 100, like Marnie said, they are from it's cool that they're from one end of the two county area to the other, that we have career women, we have retired women, we have stay at home moms and people of every walk of life. And it is wonderful because they each bring their experiences to the table in making the decisions about where the grants are going to be awarded. And it's, it's very special. The needs of this community are many. Holly, through your involvement with Impact 100, have you discovered the needs here were even greater than you might have originally thought? I think really it's part of knowing and serving the community, as you discussed earlier. And our part of our mission is really to be able to learn. And I think I did, I had no idea. The good works that were being done by nonprofits in this community, and it has enabled me to learn so much about the community. I, I love now when people come to me and they say, do you know anybody who's doing this? And I do. I mean, I know people who are doing all of these different kinds of good works, and I can send them places or suggest things, and it, I feel I've grown so much from that. Now, all grant applicants receive very careful consideration, obviously, but not all applicants can receive grants. Yet the grant process itself seems to have and create a very impactful effect. That proves beneficial to everyone in the long run, really. Can you describe how that happens, Holly? I can. It's part of what I say in trying to encourage nonprofits to apply for an Impact 100 grant. Good things happen even if you don't win a grant. And we've seen it time and time again that the women go on site visits from the committees and they become so inspired by the good work done by being done by these nonprofits that they go and they give their time to the nonprofit directly they give their money directly to the nonprofit you'll find impact 100 women serving on the boards of directors and making good things happen for these nonprofits and so it's it is so helpful i've had nonprofits tell me we haven't won yet but i'm never going to stop applying because good things happen every year that i do so marnie it can be a win win huh it is a win win it has helped our community raise the level of giving. It has helped our nonprofit community raise their own self-awareness and the self-awareness of the needs of the community. And it has helped women all over our community to feel a part of something much larger than themselves. In 2011, Impact 100 funded a place that combines the focus areas of environment and education in a wonderful way. Let's visit the Roy Hyatt Environmental Center. The Roy Hyatt Environmental Center is owned and operated by Escambia County School District. Students come on field trips, but we don't limit it just to students. We also have garden clubs, scout groups, all types of organizations who come to visit here. Isn't that really rubbery? We try to, to teach them all about environmental education and try to make them more environmentally literate. We do that by taking them on trails, nature trails on the property. All right, here we're gonna stop up here. And that is the plant I wanna talk to you guys about. It is called a? White top picture. We do White investigations top. with them, get them to do some critical thinking. We'll do observations uh, while we're on the nature trail, possibly on our bird bus over here. We climb aboard our bird bus where we get to sit inside and we view out into the bird garden where our birds are, are coming to feed on, on the bird seed and the, and the plants that we have in the garden. In 2011, we received the Impact 100 grant. And with the $107,500 that we received, we were able to do a multitude of things. We were able to build the pavilion. It's actually an outdoor education classroom. We teach classes out here, but it's multifunctional. We're also able to have children have their picnics out here. Our picnic tables, they're made from recycled uh, milk cartons. We were able to purchase these. New microscopes. Um, we extended our boardwalk. It used to be approximately a 500-foot boardwalk. Now it's a half to three-quarters of a 
mile and uh, it takes all the way deep into the bog. Um, we were able to get equipment um, so that when, with our different lessons, we're able to allow the children to become the scientists. They're able to use that scientific equipment. We bought new binoculars for the children to use both on the nature trail as well as in our bird bus. Magnifying glasses, magnifiers, to help us be able to, to bring some of these different items around the property to our locations where we're teaching, we were able to buy a, a Polaris. And so that has helped us tremendously as opposed to pulling a wagon behind us with all of our equipment in it. So I, I can't say enough about Impact 100 and what they were able to afford us. Uh, anywhere from 12 to 13,000 people are impacted every single year, not just one year, but year after year. And so this money goes a long, long way. Are there any thoughts that you would like to share about the people and organizations, Holly, that have touched you through your involvement with Impact 100? I think I've been inspired by the good work being done by all of them. And I especially, I find myself inspired by the ones that haven't, like I said, have not yet won a grant, but they continue to come back and apply each year. They they really continue to strive and they grow and learn because of the site visits. The questions that are asked at the site visits enable them to learn, okay, we need to expand our board. We need to make sure that we have people who show we're able to handle $100,000 on our board. We need to strengthen the way we do our financials or things like that. And it really, I'm inspired by the ones that keep trying and are learning and growing. And I know that someday they will win an Impact 100 grant. The Pensacola Bay Area has a relatively small population now, and yet you've become the largest impact group in the world. Why Pensacola? What do you think made that possible, Marnie? I think it's the giving spirit of the community. I think it's the everyday woman who realizes what a difference her dollars can make. And I think it's the example of philanthropy that we have taught. Well, I think part of it to me is that we keep to the original model of the Impact 100 concept. We don't deviate from it. We keep it very simple. And I think that is why we've had the success we've had also. It's amazing. You've gotten a lot of attention over that, too. And keep up the great work. Well, thank you. Thank you. Marnie and Holly, thank you so much for helping us tell the story of Impact 100. Thank you for thank having you, us. Thank you, Sherry. A little background on women's philanthropy. Um, back when I started Impact 100, it was 2001, and women often felt the only way to get involved in the community was to volunteer. They typically went out and volunteered their time, and they threw galas, and they, they did bake sales and rummage sales and so forth. They volunteered and served on committees only. But what was happening is women's roles are evolving, and they're working outside the home or they're stay-at-home moms, is they found they didn't have the sort of time that they might have had a generation ago. And as a result, they were inadvertently sort of left out of the community surface philanthropic world. Although the impact concept makes it possible for women who don't have time to volunteer to still serve their community, many members do volunteer. Each year as summer draws to a close, the work of impact committee members is nearly complete. A press conference was called in September 2014. Having spent countless hours evaluating grant applications and making site visits, the focus area committees were ready to present 15 finalists for the year's record-setting total of 10 grants. Just a month later, at the annual meeting in October, the members of Impact 100 Pensacola Bay Area gathered to perform the crucial, joyful, and yet agonizing process of selecting the 2014 grant recipients. Do not vote for three in any focus area or the machines will reject your ballots. So please vote for two in each focus area. Are there any questions on the voting? Then we're ready to start our presentations. We need your help to build another very special classroom, the Impact 100 Autism Learning Center. They listened intently as one by one, nonprofit representatives made their case to the hundreds of women assembled. We're asking for funds to expand our creative warehouse. We're a working art center, and that's a little different. 
What that means is that art's being made on the premises. We look at it on paper, we look like a ballpark where kids come out and play baseball, but we're much more. The Miracle League offers those kids a chance to be like normal kids and play the everyday game of baseball. Our goal is to reach all children, and we can do that, you can do that, with the Mess Hall Express. And the Mess Hall Express is a truck, and this truck will be loaded down with everything that's needed to have a hands-on science and math museum, an entire scientific laboratory that we can take to these outlying communities so that all children can discover. The speeches were persuasive, passionate, and plain, delivered from the heart, without PowerPoints or visuals. We are building a Native American cultural center. We need your help. We are the keepers of the fire that is our language, heritage, and culture. Up to 200 homeless men and women come each day to our center. They line up at our gate hours before we open. Your generosity will directly impact the homeless men and women of our community. Our project is to educate the community about our need for male mentors and recruit 100 men so that 100 boys will have a big brother. When the presentations concluded, the voting process commenced and tallies were taken of both absentees and those present. After a break in the hours-long session, outgoing President Holly Jernavoy was recognized and the new president, Cindy Warren, was welcomed. Then, the waiting was over. Our first grant recipient is the Miracle League of Northeast Pensacola. As the grant recipients were announced, each woman present could feel a part of something much larger than herself. Having begun 2014 celebrating a first decade of success, at year's end, the celebration resumed with the announcement of some truly remarkable figures. Since Impact's inception in 2003, the women of this small Gulf Coast city had contributed over $6 million, resulting in a total of 57 grants of more than $100,000 over the course of 11 years. What makes Pensacola so special? It's the hardworking, caring, committed people who get up every morning and decide to make a difference who get up every morning and look at what they can do to solve the problems that break their hearts. That's what makes Pensacola so special. When choosing grant recipients, sustainability is often a deciding factor. It is important for nonprofits to show they can continue to build on the benefits provided by their transformative grants. In 2014, the women of the Pensacola Bay Area demonstrated that sustainability was the hallmark of their own organization. At the dawn of a new decade, with over a thousand members strong, they were poised to continue changing lives and strengthening their community for many decades to come. <laughs>